Recently, we've been talking about the origin of primal faith and the impact that shamans specifically have had on the growth of religion throughout the years. Today, we're focusing on the next step, and that's going to be chiefdoms. In a future video, we'll cover how the transition from chiefdoms to city-states completely changes the identity of all these different religions and really explodes into a variety of different beliefs that we've never seen before. But before we get there, let's talk about chiefs and their chiefdoms. Let's go. Perhaps the biggest difference between shamans and chiefs is that chiefs were in charge of a lot more people. Shamans might have a few hundred people at the most that kind of listen to them or, and are under their jurisdiction. But for chiefs, we have thousands of people in a permanent settlement. And this really shows off the political power that chiefs have. The chiefs were not only religiously in charge, but they were politically in charge. They would be the head of the church or the temple, and the temple would be in charge of foreign affairs. It would be in charge of paving roads, uh, helping the needy, things like that. What's crazier is that the church was even responsible for waging war, for orchestrating armies. So you instantly see here the tension between the political power of the chiefdoms and their religious beliefs. And this is something, again, that can be felt even today. Neighboring chiefdoms did accept the existence of other gods, but they did not pray to or worship them. In chiefdoms, it's important to note that chiefdoms with good social cohesion due to their religious beliefs made very good armies. This would help them succeed in war and eventually take over neighboring chiefdoms. So instantly from there, we kind of have this survival of the fittest chiefdom. The chiefdom that promoted the best social cohesion through their religious beliefs would eventually be the most successful chiefdoms. Once a chiefdom did take over a certain area or a neighboring chiefdom, they would kind of assimilate their gods. Not everyone would worship these new gods that would just have been implemented in their society, but as you invade this chiefdom, you don't kill every single person. There would be many, many survivors, and they still want to have their kind of religious expression, and chiefs didn't have any problem with that. And we see that even carry out to Rome, where when Rome would take over people, they did the same thing. They had their most prominent and highest gods, but they would let you believe what you wanted to believe and even maybe construct a temple for you. This was really done not only by the Romans, but also by chiefdoms to establish better foreign connections and to kind of keep everybody happy and again, promote that social cohesion. Last thing I want to mention, the kind of the formation of science. Now, this isn't like the science that we're used to today with you know math and microscopes and stuff like that but this is a very very primitive version of science that we see starts to arise and it has an immediate impact on the chiefdoms their political beliefs or excuse me their religious beliefs and their political structure so what happens is as more information is learned about the natural world the god begins to shrink a very good example of this is the are the phases of the moon so harvest cycles were oftentimes you know, correlated with the phases of the moon and the two would kind of support each other. But what happened is that eventually they understood, you know, what exactly the moon phases were going to be and how that would impact the harvest and not needing to attribute it to a god. So people found kind of a systematic way of predicting it. And this also goes for the weather. They could begin, you know, seeing maybe different clouds or the wind or whatever, they began to kind of predict the, the weather in a very elementary way. And this is important because each time science expanded, the god began to shrink. The god was no longer involved in the weather because they kind of figured it out. The god was no longer involved directly in the harvest because they kind of figured it out. This is something we can see all the way to today. It's so fascinating to me that this tension between science and religion can be felt even today. And it's starting, you know, right here at the beginning. If you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing next week, or maybe not next week, but the week after. Soon, we're going to be talking about chiefdoms and how they start to form into city-states. And this is going to be so monumentally important for the future of religion, and especially kind of the monotheism branch of modern-day religion that we see. So you're not going to want to miss it.